Hello, and welcome back to another exi exciting, this one's very exciting, mm -hmm. episode of Red Dot Forum Camera Talk. And plaid filled. Very plaid now filled. Now that I look at us together, very plaid. I as, did, as I, usual. I did threaten to wear a solid short sleeve shirt. It would upset the balance so I, so, I feel so like much. there would have been rebellion and oh. revolt. But um, we are back for uh, another episode. You guys may have seen the news. This one is really bugging me. Well, it's, I put it on the, I put I it on the thing. Oh, uh, I'm going to switch. switch. Uh, just, okay. That one has a strap on it. It's fine. Okay. It's ridiculous. Um, so you may have seen that there was a large swath of updates from Leica yesterday, um, May 6th. And, um, well, well, what is this episode about? What are we going to talk? This episode is dedicated to Leica firmware, both specifically the latest updates we saw yesterday for mm -hmm. all the M10 generation cameras, the Q2, Q2 monochrome, SL2, and SL2S. Our plan is to go through each model, show you how to perform the update, and this will be true for future updates as well. That process doesn't change. And also go through all of the changes, how to use them, how they're going to impact your photography. And we'll also, of course, take questions on the cameras in general and anything else that you guys can find to throw at us. So, yes. Um, we have Horrible talked... intro, by the way, David. What? Horrible intro. Horrible intro, yeah. This is David. David, they were starting. We're taking the ground running. So, Welcome. We had to make a few Welcome. studio changes. That's okay. We're, we're tweaking yeah. this We do have a new uh, thing. A thing. A new camera. Yeah. Or whatever. Like a new studio camera. So I can't wait to see how that explodes <laughs> in the middle of our show. I'm dying to find out. The anticipation is literally killing me. And it's running the new firmware. Oh, so well, that's true. We did update. The, yes. No. A lot of fun is going to happen this evening. For sure. When is it not, though? Sometimes. Anyway, do we have any housekeeping things to get out of the way before we start the show properly? I feel like... Let's see if we're missing anything. Probably. Is everybody mad at us for starting two minutes late? Come on. I don't know. It's uh, it's the Coriolis effect. We're slightly behind here in Hollywood. It's two minutes. Is that how that works? Yeah. 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 Okay. Miami effect. Um... Oh, love, I, love clashing plaids. Yeah. That's our new nickname is clashing plaids. Clashing, <laughs> clashing plaids with David and Josh. Clash and Plaid sounds like a cool like punk band. Yeah, that's that's like the name that. of our shit of Very our cool. new. That's, um, yeah, and I'm actually rocking some retro tech tonight as well because apparently new tech doesn't work. So here we go. Yeah, uh, this is so we can show people that use Mac how to do the firmware on a Mac. So because we know a lot of you guys and girls like to use the Mac ecosystem. Ecosystem, yeah. So that's why that's here, not any other mysterious reason. Um, it's mysterious. Can you give us before we dive into the specifics? Yeah. Conceptually. Why do we have firmware, or why, why do we why do we have updates? Why do we need updates? What is can, give us a little bit of an overview behind that? Well, um, a product from Leica, or really from any kind of whether it's whether it's your laptop that has updates, or your phone that's not a phone, <laughs> or your phone that has updates. You know, everything has firmware updates these days. Uh, everything is updated. Apps that you download uh, onto your phone have constant updates, regular improvements and fixes. And and camera hardware is really no different. If all you got was, and I, I guess let's let's rewind that. If you bought a film camera, a, a Leica M3 back in the day, there's no updates. Like you could put <laughs> film in it and you could put a different lens on, but the camera functionality is set based on the mechanics of the camera. Because these are digital cameras, Leica and the design team can continue to improve on the camera performance, uh, introduce features and address user interface things that that based on feedback from customers, which is what we find uh, is is in these cameras in this latest update. Some of them are really basic, like the M10 generation getting compatibility with the newly introduced Visiflex. You know, this product didn't exist. It wasn't even a concept that this would exist when those cameras were in the design process. So I think it's actually pretty neat that Leica had backward, is now offering backwards compatibility to their whole existing product lineup with a brand new viewfinder. Um, likewise, on the, um, on the Q2, it's getting some features that were introduced on the SL2 and the SL2S. And the SL2 is getting some, some new features for improved autofocus and whatnot. And some features that we lost when we went yeah, from the SL that's to right. the SL2, we're that's getting right. some of those back, which is cool. Which, and those, I would say, are based on user feedback. Yes. You know, Leica engineers didn't think that 
we needed those features anymore. And the overwhelming feedback from the community, from you guys, was we do want those features. And like a listen, it said, yeah. we'll give them to you. There you go. So I think overall, this is firmware updates are a good thing. It doesn't mean that anything is inherently broken with the cameras. I think that there, there tends to be a bit of a stigma attached to, oh, well, this is just for bug fixes. It's like, no. Sometimes. Sometimes. But in the case of, of all these firmware updates we're going to talk about today, they really are feature improvements, enhancements, and additions, and introducing backwards compatibility. And I think... I, I, just, I just wish they wouldn't have done everything in uh, one day. Well, well, that does give us an excuse to do a show all about it, because this is the first time we've done a firmware-themed episode. True, true. And I've said this a million times. I probably said it last show, and I'm going to say it again. If you're not keeping up to date with the latest firmware updates, you're not getting your money's worth yeah. out of your equipment. Everybody loves the latest and greatest from Leica. I remember when the M9 came out, then the M240 came out, and et cetera, et cetera, and everybody gets super excited. And then a year or two later, they've gone through two or three firmware updates, and I'll see somebody's camera, and it's still on version 1.0. Mm -hmm. And I'll go, why, why didn't you update? You paid for the camera. That means you paid for all the features that I was going to add later in firmware. So I realized, we realized that it may be a little intimidating or a little confusing how to do the update. So our goal, one of the big goals for tonight's show is to demystify that. Mm -hmm. um, David's going to walk us through very, very sort of square zero to the completion how to yeah. update your firmware. Um, well, on well, it's a team effort. So I'm going to take the, the computer side yes. of what you need to do yes. on the internet, on your computer. Yes to get the firmware from the internet to a memory card. I'm going to give it to Josh, and then he's going to actually walk you through each camera and show you our, our new little addition in the studio here. That's right. uh, so you can see step-by-step step the entire process, and then we'll go through uh, go through the menus and explain what, what some of those features are. Oh, and I should also mention, this another thing I mention every single episode, we know what's here now. We don't know what's coming. So... A lot, we've had a lot, every time there's a firmware update or a round of updates, inevitably people ask us, when is Leica going to add this feature? When is Leica going to add that compatibility? And obviously we're all about new stuff, but we don't actually know. You know, this update or these updates, we found out like a day in advance. Yeah. You know, and we had to scramble last minute, we'll say David, <laughs> we'll to get me. all the stuff up on Red Dot Forum and also to sort of get familiar with the update. So mm -hmm. while we're all about, you know, super cool new features, we don't know what Leica is going to do right. until they do it. So just to make that clear. That's clear. I think we are, the way we're going to do this is we're going to go system by system. We're going to, and for anyone watching, we'll start with the uh, M10 generation. We'll go to the Q2, Q2 monochrome, and then we'll finish off with the SL2 and the SL2S, and obviously take questions in between. Yes. Cool. Yes. Wow. Okay. So, so why don't we start, David, with the M10R, which is a camera that I have sure. ready to go right here. Okay. okay. So it, um, it's important to mention that even though the, the feature set, so to speak, of the M10 generation firmware is the same across all the cameras, each camera has its unique firmware. Yeah. Let, let's go over to, Show us. to the computer, if you can. Jose. There, there we go. Is. Okay. So... As you can see, I'm here on the main page of Red Dot Forum, and there are a few different uh, firmware updates. So I'm going to look at this one here, which is the M10. And what I've done, if you haven't checked out the article, is I have a handy dandy, I'm going to zoom in on that, a handy dandy little chart here. So this is the latest firmware versions as of yesterday, May 6, 2022. And I've listed every single one, including, you'll notice, special editions, the M10P ASC edition, the M10 Zagato edition. And these are the specific former versions. Um, and if you click on them, it will save to your computer. So a lot of people uh, wanted to know, well, a couple things. One is, why did all the firmware files disappear off Leica's website? Uh, we don't know the answer to that, but they did. Thankfully, uh, for a little while, for a few years, I have been downloading them off of Leica site, the official files, putting them on our own FTP server so that they don't move. They're always going to be linked in the respective firmware articles. So you can generally find whatever firmware you're looking for on Red Dot Forum. And these are, yes, it is safe. I swear these aren't like virusy, whatever. <laughs> this is this is us, okay? And again, you can see Every model that's had, that is received an upgrade is is on that list. Yes. The M10 um, ASC and Editions of Gato get their own updates because they have slightly different 
um, functionality of the Zagato doesn't have Wi-Fi, uh, and the ASC has like extra frame lines and, and cinema modes that necessitate its own sure. firmware. Okay, so where do we start? We should start. Well, let's start coming back because yeah. very first step one is I'm going to give Josh this. Well, there's I'm going to go even step zero. Oh, it's step zero. Okay. There's three things that you need on the camera side to do your firmware. Number one is the camera in question. Number two is a fully charged battery, fully charged. Number three is a memory card that you can format. When I say format, what that means you're going to wipe everything off of the memory cards. What you don't want to do is grab a memory card from your last trip that you haven't uploaded to Lightroom yet, take that and start the firmware process with that because you can't format it or you wouldn't want to. So you have your camera, a fully charged battery, and an SD memory card that you can format. Those are the three things you need on the camera side. Mm -hmm. What are they going to need on the computer side? You need a computer connected to the internet. And? And an SD card reader. That's a big one. Mm -hmm. Now, some MacBooks have SD card readers built in. Yes. So interestingly, this, uh, as a retro tech, this is uh, my 2015 MacBook that has long since been retired, and it's giving me very angry messages about the battery being bad. Um, I have a newer, uh, whatever, 2021 16-inch uh, MacBook Pro with the new M1 Pro, M1 Max processors. And ironically, you know, if you have a really old one, like a 2015, it has an SD card reader. If you have a really new one, like a 2021, it has an SD card reader. In between the dark ages, as we were, <laughs> um, I think from 2016 through 2020, no SD card reader. So you just need an external card reader. And obviously, if you're using cameras, you right. know the drill. You should have one. You should already. have one already. If you don't, that's okay. Kind of. But you should have one. You should have one. Use this as, it, as the impetus you need to go out and get a card yes. reader if your computer does not have one built in. Yes. So you also need it. You missed one thing. You need an internet connection. I said internet. Did you? I did. Okay. Well, you didn't say it clearly. I said the internet. Internet I, connection, <laughs> computer, some, I guess a <laughs> tiny bit of hard drive space to free, <laughs> and a memory card reader. Yes. And these are the tools that you need to actually get the update process started. Yes. So now... We're going to start with the M10R. The process for updating is going to be the same on all M10 generation mm -hmm. cameras, except for the M10D, which has no screen. And I'm guessing you didn't grab the M10D, did you? I didn't. I'll tell you. It's easy. I'll tell you how to do it um, conceptually. So the first thing that I'm going to do is place... That's yours. Oh, I have to take this off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I can, clearly, I was thinking too far ahead. First thing I'm going to do is insert the memory card that I'm going to format, which is the memory card I'm going to put the firmware on, or David will, yep. into the camera that I'm going to update. Because what you need to do is format the SD card in the camera that you're going to update. So if you have an SL2, a Q2, and an M10, mm -hmm. you need to reformat the card in each one of those cameras before you update that camera. Yes. Makes sense, right? Makes sense to me. Okay. So I'm popping a card in the M10R, putting the base plate on. Of course, I'm just going to probably hold it for the sake of this um, part because I have to put it, sure. take it right back out. Uh, back it up, a little back bit it up over here. You'll see why I'm kind of finagling it around here. Can we get focus? Yes. All right, Jose, can we get less glare? That'd the be yeah. <laughs> top down camera. I'm going to tweak it once I'm uh, ready to go. You have to move it a little bit. Where? To your right. Here? Yep. There you go. Hey. 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 Sorry, this is new. Brand new. Oh. And got it. Okay. Ready? Yes. Yes. Look at that. I have here my M10R. Oh, sorry. There's nothing on the screen, so it's um, blanking out. It's, it's having a hard time focusing. Why don't you put something on the screen? Come on. There we go. Hey. It's and cool. and it wants to try. This, this reminds me of like the early, <laughs> the early days when we couldn't get anything in there focus. You go. Ever. There we go. Sorry, guys. All right. So here I have my M10R. And I'm just going to show you this quickly. The first thing we need to do is format our memory card. So I put in the memory card that we're going to update. I'm going to go to the main menu like so. Go over. I'm going to scroll down to format SD. I'm going to go over. Do I really want to format? Yes. Give that a second. And depending on the size of the card and the speed of the card, it may take less time or more time to format. So that is the very first step. You'll also see that if I have press here and I hit our center button, I have a mostly fully charged battery, 95%. 95%. That should be enough. It probably drained that 5% in the few minutes I was tinkering here earlier. Let's come back to us, Jose. Um, so now I'm going to, so now I've got a fully charged battery and I've just formatted my SD card. 
I'm now going to hand it over to David, who is going to take us through the next steps. And I do see a question here. Uh, why, why format the memory card in the camera and hmm. not in the computer? And I'm going to show you why. Because that is a good question. So when I put the memory card in the computer, I just, the card reader on the side you can't see. So he, David, what David did is just took the memory card that I formatted, and he put it in the card reader, and that's where we left off. Okay. So if we go over to my screen, you'll see that it says Leica M. And you will notice there's a folder here, DCIM. That is why we formatted it in the camera, because it has the right name, and it has the right folder structure now to have the firmware put on. If we just put a blank card in that has no data on it, the camera doesn't necessarily know what it is. It's so, probably OK, Yeah. but it's, this is better. I don't like probably OK. I like right. definitely OK. This it's is just, better. And Leslie, uh, yes, you can use the same memory card to update different models as long as you format in yep. that specific model each time before you update. So now this is an M10R. So what David's done here, he's gone to Red Dot Forum. Let me go he's back. He's found here. the article that just came out about, sorry to interrupt you. I'm just, no, I just okay. want to make sure we don't get ahead of ourselves. Right. He's found the article that just came out that he wrote to, uh, today about the latest firmware updates. So that is, yep. that is where we're at. And I'm going to click this. And you'll notice down here at the bottom of my screen, it is now downloading that firmware file. Now, uh, uh, so what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw in a couple of like common uh, missteps that I've seen or that David and I have done. Sure. And one of them that we've all done is as some of these updates get more complex, the file size of the update itself Gets bigger. can get larger. And sometimes you may not realize it hasn't finished downloading Correct. yet. And you'll cut you kind of um, in your exuberance to get these new features, copy it over to your memory card before it's finished downloading. So you just want to make sure that the download is complete and there's no more little spinning bar yep. before you take the next step. And then what I'm going to do is say show in Finder. How did you get to say show in Finder? Uh, I just clicked on the little arrow next to that in my okay. browser. Okay. Now keep in mind, I am using Chrome. If I was using Safari, it would look a little bit different. Um, so depends on the browser you're using, but it's where your downloads go. And you'll see here, uh, it went into my downloads folder. So just to make things easy, I moved all my old files into this old folder. So we'd only see the firmware updates here. And you can see it says M10R 3.0 or 30, 22, 11, 52. And that is the conversion. From there, to get it onto the memory card, first, a, a big misstep that we see is people will just double click on this. And if I do that, there is no application to open this document, OK? Because this isn't designed to be opened on your computer. This is only recognizable by your camera. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click, and I'm going to drag this file. I'm going to click and drag it better. Mm -hmm. Click and drag this file onto the Leica M memory card. Now, this is another great reason to format the memory card in the camera. Because the, that Leica M that you see on the left there, mm -hmm. that's what the camera named the memory card. It did. So this makes it really easy to quickly identify in your finder where the memory card is. And, and the reason that David is dragging the file is this is effectively a copy, yep. copy paste. It's just a quicker way. And what you, he also could have done, mm -hmm. which is, I can do. Yeah, just I know I'm. That's okay. Just so they can see. What else could you have done? So I could have right clicked, or two finger click, and. I could have copied this full file, copy, gone to like a M, right click again, and say paste item. Now, if I do that, it's going to say, well, it already exists. Right, so we don't need to do that. So I'm going to stop. I'm not going to replace it. Yeah. But you could have done either the drag and drop method or the copy and paste. The other thing not to do is do not put it into this DCIM like a folder because that is the wrong place. It needs to be in what's called the root directory, which you can see here when I click just on the drive letter or drive name, it shows right next to that DCIM folder. You want to be able to see both of these things. Right. If you only see DCIM, the firmware is not in the yeah. right place. You want to see, as David said, the yep. DCIM folder and the firmware file Correct. next to each other like that. Correct. Now, the next step, because it's a Mac, uh, you need to hit this little eject button here next to the, so there's the memory card. I need to eject it. OK, it's closed the Finder window because it has ejected my card, which I have right here. And we can go back to our wide view. And I'm going to give this to Josh. All right. So now this memory card has the firmware file that David just copied to it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put it back in my camera, like so. There we go. Come on. 
That's a little sticky. You gotta want it. You gotta want it. And I'm, <laughs> what I'm gonna do now is just for the sake of making it a little more stable, I'm gonna put yeah. this on my little tripod here. Second. Here we go. Only slightly fiddly to do this backwards. <laughs> and again, this process is gonna be the same for oh, right back. Yeah, same for the M10, M10P, M10 Monochrome. Yes. Um, not the M10D, which we'll uh, talk about. Again, we can't show it. We don't have one, but we'll talk about it. And the instructions are also in the article. So in the article that David wrote, it's not just links to the downloads and also instruction or um, explanations of what's changed, but there's also instructions about how to do the update just in case you. Oh, you want to wipe that screen off too? I'm going to. Yeah. I'm just struggling to. Uh, oh, get this thing on here. Uh huh. There you go. <laughs> I'm glad nobody's watching me do this. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. No, no. Sideways. Sideways. What? Do I have it right? No, not really. Yeah. Like this. No. What am I doing? Here. Sometimes. Oh, okay. Yeah, this yeah, one, yeah, yeah, it yeah. has safeties on the front and back. This is David's tripod. Oh, I know. I should know how to do this. Things are hard. Things are hard everywhere. There we go. There we go. Let me clean the screen. Uh, I got to clean the screen. There we go. Get it centered, and then we're good to go. Okay. Let's see. Uh, a little higher. Yeah. Uh, that looks pretty good. A little to the right. To the right. There you go. Okay. Wow. And perfect. Sweet. All right. Let's go to the close-up camera. That took me 15 minutes to get there to. There it okay. is. <laughs> so here's my M10R, <laughs> and inside of my M10R is the memory card that has the firmware file on it that David just copied. So I've turned the camera on. I'm going to go to the menu. So I hit menu. I'm going to go to the main menu. You can also do this by clicking the menu button again. Correct. I'm just bypass. doing it in the most sort of sure. Yeah. In this case, because I know that the camera information section of the menu where I do the updates is near the bottom, instead of sc scrolling down through the whole menu, I'm actually going to scroll up, which is going to take us from the very top of the menu to the very bottom. So if I go up like that, you can see we've already gotten to the very last item in the menu, which is camera information. Now, I already know this update's going to go smoothly because I see the little red exclamation point right here, which is telling me that there is a firmware update for this camera on this memory card. So when I go to the right, I see that little exclamation point again next to the firmware version. I'm going to go to the right again, and I can see it says, here's my installed version, and here's the version that is on the memory card already. And it's going to ask me, do I want to update camera firmware? I do. So I'm going to go to yes, hit my center button. There we go. And now the process begins. Now, if you've never updated your M10R or M10 generation camera before, this takes a very long time, like several minutes. So Probably the best thing to do is while this is going for you to start talking about the changes because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't think anybody wants to stare at the screen for the next. Uh, I mean, maybe they do. Twenty minutes. Who wants to stare at the screen? Do you guys want to stare <laughs> at the screen? <laughs> sure. And oh, right. <laughs> Show and to, to see a question that I to answer a question I saw in the chat. Um, I skimmed over there. Uh, the updates are fully backwards compatible, mm -hmm. meaning that the newest update always has all the older updates in it. So you don't have to go one at a time, let's yeah. say you're three versions out of date or whatever. The latest one. Latest one is good, and then it covers everything. I just updated an SL2 from version one to oh. version four in one shot, and wow. it was fine. So I know wow. that it works okay. Okay. That's, wow. Talk about, like, you got to get your money's worth. Um, a question that Steven had just asked that I know we're going to cover more later, but to answer it to get you guys started is oftentimes when you update the firmware on these cameras, you'll be prompted to save your user profiles. Yes. Sometimes not, sometimes yes. It seems to be inconsistent. On the M10 cameras, the firmware update doesn't actually reset the camera. Mm -hmm. So it's not going to prompt you to save your user profiles. Now, most other cameras, Q2, SL2, the firmware update actually resets the camera, which means all the settings are going to go back to factory default, mm -hmm. and you will get that prompt. On the M10s, if, if I had a bunch of settings dialed in and I did the update, it's just going to be the way I left it. It's kind of a cool... M11's kinda, like that, too. Yeah, I kind of wish all the other cameras did that, but who yeah, knows? Yeah, you know, they can't talk to each other, you know. Yeah, who knows? So uh, um, The other yeah. thing you can do, if you don't trust the save profiles to card, um, you may, and it, it's not a bad practice, if you've done a lot of customization to user profiles and button layouts, uh, it's not a bad idea to have an extra memory card around mm -hmm and just do a backup of all your settings on the card separately of the firmware. Because then, if you want to reload this in the camera, you just would load profiles from card, and they're all there. Yeah. So I would say that's kind of the invisible step one, even before you do the battery and the memory card and all that, is backup your user profiles if you've done any kind of customization. Yeah. Some people 
haven't used user profiles. So you would have nothing saved in your user profiles. And I think we'll talk about user profiles if we have time, just seeing that it's already 8.30 and we've only done. Yeah, <laughs> we're getting there. Our focus on this one is firmware. Obviously, unanswered lingering questions, we have an infinite number of more shows we're going to do. So don't worry. If we don't get to it, we will cover it. Let's talk about this, because this is really the, the main crux yeah. of the This is the update. March firmware update for this. Oh, wait. It's Mar May. Sorry. It's, uh, you know, whatever. Just a few it's levels. close. A few yeah. Levels. So back in January, Leica promised that there would be backwards compatibility or future forward compatibility for the M10 generation to work with the new Visiflex, backwards compatible. At that time, we had a lot of questions, people saying, should I get the Visiflex 2? I've got an M10R. I've got an M10 monochrome. I don't plan on getting an M11 at this point, but should I put my name down on a list for a Visiflex 2? Because, oh my gosh, it's 3.7 megapixel and it's metal and it's amazing. And I've got an EVF, you know, a Visiflex Type 020. Is it worth the upgrade? Yeah. And both Josh and I independently have been with two sets of these. Yeah. And we're both playing around with it. Two more. Um, and kind of drawing our own conclusions of, is it worth it? Is it not? Because we, at that time, and up until yesterday, the advice we have been giving has been, let's wait and see. Let's wait and see. Don't do anything yet, because it may or may not be worth it, which I think is pretty reasonable advice, right? Yeah. Um, so here, here's the general gist. The camera, the M10 generation, that's M10, M10P, M10D, M10R, M10 monochrome, and assorted other special editions. Special editions. Yeah. Only outputs enough resolution for the Visiflex Type 020, which is... And wow, it is pouring outside. I, I don't think I can hear the thunder. You cannot hear that, yeah. but like oh, there oh, is a crazy thunderstorm. Gone. So that would be bad. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, if we disappear off your screen, it's because there is like the world is ending outside. Um, so it was a dark and stormy night, and we're talking about Visiflexes. So this is a 2.4 megapixel panel, and these cameras, the M10 generation, was only designed to output 2.4 megapixel video feed. This is 3.68 megapixel uh, resolution, which was designed from the get-go on the M11 to output here. Leica has made this compatible, which is great with just this firmware update. Um, but the camera still can't output more resolution than it was designed for. So it's still outputting 2.4 megapixels into the 3.68 megapixel EVF. How that materializes is the view inside here is just a little bit smaller than if you put this on an M11. Um, whoop. Oop. Cut back to that. Come back to the camera, Jose. Oh, it's exciting. Nothing's happening. It's, nothing's happening. Okay. It's done. It's done. It rebooted. Okay. You check the firmware version. There yeah, it is. There it is. Okay. Yeah. Um, so let's put this on here. Okay. The moment of truth. The moment of truth. Is it going to work? There you go. My view. Let's see. Uh, I can't like put my head over there. <laughs> they can see me doing it here. Voila! It, it works. works. Yay! Well, this is an M10R, but this is the same with all the I think the you cameras. can just put like, you can cover the sensor. Yeah, no, I There you go. Works. Look, yeah. there. See it yeah. lit up. Well, they can't see that. They can't see that. Oh, they don't have the, yeah, there. See you it. can't see it. There it is. Look there it is. Look at that. Amazing. Uh, oh, no. Okay. Okay, come back to us. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, it's not easy. Come on. Um, so, what we saw is it's not readily apparent that it's that much smaller because it's using an OLED panel. If you have familiar with OLED, either you have a television or computer monitor or something that's OLED tech, what's really cool about, or or an iPhone, let's say, that's OLED, black is pure black because there's no illumination. There's self-illuminated pixels versus an LCD panel, which has a backlight. So even the black pixels have a backlight, which makes them a little bit gray. Uh, blacks are never pure black. So it's not... I guess, totally noticeable that it's missing anything when you put it on an M10. That's the good news. The other good news is it is sharper. Sort it of. is slightly it's sh slightly sharper, yeah. crisper, kind of higher contrast, brighter, kind better of. color fill. Sort like. of. <laughs> there, I know, I'm, just, I'm, 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 I'm ruining your, your, your temper moment. It. Well, the reality is, I'm just going to dive in yeah, for, go for a moment for it. here. You, you tell your... Thing. Well, I spent a whole bunch of time this afternoon in the store, literally just like, with the camera on a tripod, just like switching back and forth, like yeah. some kind of manic, crazy person, basically trying to answer the question, 
is it worth it? Mm -hmm. Meaning if I have a VisaFlex O2O 0 and I have an M10 generation camera, should I buy the VisaFlex 2 or should I stick with the O2O? 0 In my opinion, it's not necessarily worth it. Unless, of course, you plan on getting an M11, then yeah, of course, because you can't use the O2O on the M11. But the differences between the two, just in terms of the way it looks, are not so dramatic that when I look through the VisaFlex 2, I go, wow, this is right. game changing. As a glasses wearer, one of the interesting things is the smaller view in the VisaFlex 2 mm -hmm. gives you the effect of more eye relief. Mm. So you can actually, for me, see the entire frame a little bit easier. Than moving your head around. Exactly. Yeah. So the larger view in the VisaFlex O2O, because in the O2O, it fills the entire viewfinder, obviously. Yes, yeah. In the VisaFlex 2, it's a little bit kind of shrunk. It's not like letterbox or anything. It's just a little, just imagine like 90% smaller. Um, no, not 90% smaller. Or 10% smaller. 10% smaller. <laughs> smaller. <laughs> Sorry. That's, I think I'm like zooming wild. out on uh, Lightroom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's just a little bit sh kind of shrunk. So that is kind of cool because again, it's like having more eye relief. Um, but it's not dramatic. It's not night and day. It's not night and day. And yes. you're giving something up. Something big. Something big. Possibly. Yeah. Depending on your whatever. This plastic VisaFlex 2 has a GPS receiver in it. Mm. This metal, smaller VisaFlex 2 is metal and has no GPS. So that is because when the M11 was designed from the outset to have improved connect wireless connectivity to the Leica Photos app, like all the other cameras, you get geotagging through the Photos app. Um, but it's nice to not have to use the app and you can just use... Well, it doesn't work. It doesn't. I don't think geotagging works on the M10 because it has no Bluetooth. So Correct. If you... Essentially, you have to ask yourself, do you want, do you want yeah. to have GPS and a larger view and something you already own or do you want to have the metal construction, a better diopter design because mm -hmm. it's definitely harder to turn yep. and a slightly nicer appearance and better feel and a, maybe a 10% improvement in viewing experience if I had yep. to get, put a number on it. It's not worse. Don't get me wrong. It's better. Like, yeah. it's a little bit easier to focus. I don't know. I think maybe I wanted it to be so badly to be better that I'm projecting that. Because again, I went back and forth and back and forth and back and forth a bunch yeah. of times with a Noctilux Point 95, which right, is where right, you would right. notice it. Sure. It's not super dramatic, which makes sense because the same if resolution. you have an old Nintendo, whether you put a 1080p <laughs> TV in or an 8K TV into it, it's not really going to change the experience that much. No. And this no. is not quite the same concept, That's but not the, kind of the no, same. No. Slightly better than an old Nintendo. You, you realize that 2.4 megapixels still more than full HD, yeah, right? Yeah, I know. Okay. It's pretty good. Yeah. So let's show the um, what they look like side by side in terms of the on the camera. Um, we have a... Yeah, this one, right? Yeah, just so they can see, just so we can show you kind of like the physical differences between the two. Um, hold on. Here we go. I know, I know Daryl, you asked about that, so okay, we're going to show you. Just to, just so they can see kind of visually, put it next to each other. Can we get a close-up camera, Jose, on this? Mm. Right now, it just looks like we're like on the I home shopping network, there. just like presenting. Do -do. Uh, there we go, there we go. There Act we go. now, operator staying by. <laughs> oh. hey, so well, there's the differences. No, nope, like this? Yeah, there we go. Way. You can see the O2O is a little bit higher and a little bit narrower. Up from the side here. The VisaFlex 2 is a little bit skinnier. And then do the angle. Here we go. Very exciting. Now, this one doesn't have click stops. Ah, that is another difference. This one is sort of like infinitely positionable. And the VisaFlex 2 has basically just two, has a 45. But the, the initial ones are a little yeah, more gentle. Kind though. of, but it's not perfect. And then it has a... So that's another difference. But um, it also has magnets, which is cool. And it won't... Come loose. That's true. So this, this one can't... Like, well, this one snaps, kind of. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it does. It's not as nicely designed. Oh, you can come back to us. So they're not... It's not an earth-shattering difference. Um, and is it worth it? I, 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 don't I don't know. I don't know. I would say, if you already own a VisiFlex 020, it's probably going to be just fine uh, going forward, unless you like that newer design, unless you like the metal. But... If you have, let's say, an M11, this also opens up the opportunity that, let's say, you complement that with an M10 monochrome. You can share the same VisaFlex between the two. Yeah. I'm I'm seeing it more as a compatibility issue rather than an upgrade issue. Fair. Pretty much agree with that. So 
I'm sure that doesn't even come close to answering all the questions that have. Probably not. But, you know, we have only been using this since yesterday. Yeah. So we're still, you know, we need, I need more real world. A little fresh on this. NPNR, Visa Flex 2 experience.